Mining Network's coverage of PDAC is brought to you by Tudor Gold. Hello, welcome back to Mining Network. We're at PDAC and I'm with Ian Harris, the President and CEO of Outcrop Silver and Gold. Ian, good to be with you again. Nice to see you in a, in a different country. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I saw you in Colombia, I think last November. Uh, November just gone and then we, we caught up in Zurich and we had some questions around more around the actual mine design and the potential future of how you're going to get this thing up and running and it's quite a nice time to touch base because you've had some really nice success with the drill bit throughout winter we're now going into the the spring there's, there's a lot more work to be done this year I, just as a quick reminder to people we, we do have a documentary coming out very very soon uh, on outcrop silver and gold where we outline our case where we think they're actually going to make their pathway to 100 million ounces. It's a very, very high grade silver deposit. Um, and the margins should be, we'll see down the line, but should be pretty good. Um, so Ian, why don't you just give us a bit of an update. What have you been up to since we last caught up in November? So the we finished out 2024 continuing to execute on uh, drill testing as many targets as possible. And then right at the end of the year, we got all the way down to the very southern portion of our current um, permitted titles down in Mangos and soon to be Frias, those are the last two targets on the end, um, which was very exciting. And it puts, it puts you know, we, we, we put together a strategy that says we need to see where our pathway is going to be coming from. Yep. Um, and uh, that allows us to execute this year on, with a high level of confidence, trying to add ounces for the least cost possible. Right, that was really where we're trying to, trying to set up a database of where can we add additional resources, where they can come from, and what can we do at the, the most cost efficiency. Mm. So really 2025 now is moving more towards uh, the, resource, the resource side. At the end of the day, we know where our valuation comes from. Our valuation is based on our existing resource. We know what market is valuing that at. And we also know that we can add ounces for a lot less than that number. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, I believe that silver price is gonna go through the roof one day. I, we're one of the very few primary silver projects, but one of the highest graders in the world. We're highly leveraged to silver price, but I don't know when that's gonna happen. So until then, we're executing on a plan that I know will deliver value for a lot less than our cost. Yeah, but even at today's prices, I mean, uh, uh, Obviously, like I said, with the caveat here that you haven't released an economic study, but if you look at these high, very, very high grade, narrow vein silver mines in South America, um, you'd imagine you're going you're gonna to be falling into that pretty good centile in terms of cost and, and, and uh, margin. But one of the things that when, when we were looking back through all of the footage that we took in Colombia, and it's absolutely stunning, a lot of this stuff, um, we, we, would, we had a really good chat with Guillermo in the Korshak, who's your, your VP Geology. And he was talking about how they categor categorically go around and categorize the different um, sampling that you do to then find your targets, do your trenching, do your drilling, get in into resource, right? You've got, what, 17 and a half kilometer trend, and you're usually finding veins around, what, every 300 to 500 meters, even if you took the, the worst case scenario, 500 meters, there's, there's 35 veins there, uh, I, I think, just in my mind, you're proving everywhere at the north, in the in the middle now with this year, now in the south with Frias, which was a price producing mine. You, we sort of, you sort of know what's going on down there. The, to me, the pathway to a much larger, much more significant company isn't that far away. You 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 seem like you're set on a on a pretty pretty straightforward way of getting about it, right? This, this is a matter of time now. In my That's mind. right, because it's, it's, it really is a corridor of veins, and within yeah. that corridor, you find individual veins. Aguilar is quite, quite, quite consistent well, in its length at, a, I think, almost three kilometers now. But individually, there's, there's, there's units uh, within, this, uh, within this corridor. And if you even look at our map that we have, which has all the veins identified, you see all this clustering up in the north. But that's where the majority of the work has been done on the yeah. project. So yeah. yes, intrinsically, you can say there's 37 million ounces already in resource up here, still some space to grow up here. And you know, down into the trend, you could easily see how there is a pathway over 100 million. Yeah. But we like de-risking that. We like knowing, that's what's so exciting about this year is because I know where our next resource increase is going to come from. But 
that other work is still going on, mm. starting with the simple, the mapping, the chip samples, then the soil samples, then the trenching, and we do a lot of work to categorize our targets before drilling on them. Because the truth is, you know, it's about delivering additional ounces, creating more value than you're spending, and that is the disciplined way to, to attack it. So, yes, I have a high level of confidence we'll be able to do it, but it's doing it also in the most efficient way yeah. and to know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, and, and it makes it a whole lot easier. We're so much more confident in where we are today. We're sitting with money in the bank. We know where we're going to drill. We know what we can have a good guess on what we're going to be able to deliver. We're looking at doing a, that resource update at the end of, uh, uh, starting at the end of 2025, but should be come out, come out in the first quarter of 2026. So yes, and then we have all the leverage to silver price or even expiration equities as a whole. So we know we can deliver value until that other day will come. So um, it's uh, very proud of what the team has done in 2025 to get us to where we are, uh, sorry, in 2024 to be where we are today in 2025. Yeah, look, I think it's just, it, it, there is a matter of time in there because it's, for me, obviously you're talking about the 37 million in the North part, which was your initial resource grades of over, I think average grade, what was it, about 650? Correct grams per ton of silver, um, only drilling down to about 200 meters on each of those veins. But there's clearly more in the north, there's, there's clearly more to find across this whole structure. You, in the middle, you've, you've hit what, Leye, Aguilar, uh, Correct. Jimenez. Uh, Jimenez. Jimenez. Uh, I think there's a few others as well. Guadal. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you've got the old Frias mine in the south, which was, uh, remind me of the grades that they were mining out of that oh, thing? Oh wow, I don't even want, I know that they were <laughs> mining over a thousand grams per ton yeah. historically, I think probably around 2,000 grams per ton. But you know what we're finding out is that there's very similar grades continue uh, throughout the entire trend, right? Mm. Um, uh, it almost it was what was easy to access. Uh, we had the old Frias mine, we had the old Mangos mine, uh, and the old Santa Ana mine. To be fair, is where the really the project uh, uh, started. So there's still lots, and one of the reasons why another reason is to step out is you want to find the areas that you convert ounces for as cheaply as possible, right? So there's still places to go up in the Northeast, but we obviously want to convert ounces uh, the most efficiently possible. It's one of the reasons why we don't drill below 250 meters. Well, um, why do you need to when you've got a prolific strike? That's, that's correct. <laughs> we have better places <laughs> yeah. that uh, yeah. call, get more ounces per meter of yeah. uh, drilled than just going deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Yeah, okay. Um, just talk to me about the plan. Obviously, you were just saying there that you've got the resource that you're working on this year. You've, you've done a hell of a lot of drilling last year, uh, 2020, 2024, which and we got to scope, go and see quite a lot of that. I think it was, we were at Mangos, was it? Was, was We were at, uh, I think we went uh, to Aguilar. Oh, was I don't think we went to Mangos in that, uh, in that trip. We no, we were at Morena. A Morena, La Morena. We're at Morena. We're at Morena. Uh, so we're at the Moreno target. Um, obviously, results have all been coming through on that. We, we saw some of the great, I mean, 15,000 uh, grams per ton. It was just weighed, weighed quite a lot. It was quite nice to hold. Um, I, I guess for, for people looking at this, because part of the documentary was that there was a potential pathway into production here through a pilot scale with the government at Tolima. We spoke to the government at Tolima. They were, to put it lightly, pretty on board with the idea. <laughs> Um, how are you looking at that in terms of, because you, you've got two pathways here of how you're going to be, I guess, providing value. One is, like you were saying, cheaply added more ounces, growing that resource base, keep drawing those lines in the sand where you, you can show what the value of this company is. But then you've got the other side of it where you can potentially really, really de-risk the, the metallurgy and, and go into some small scale production. How's the other side of that looking? How much are you going to start focusing on that in 2025, 2026? So I'm going to I'm going to start uh, with we know where our value comes from, and we know where other silver companies get their valuation based upon whether they're in, you know, except for the discovery phase, but post resource phase or project development phase or an operational phase, where that value comes from, and we want to make sure we travel that path correctly, mm -hmm. because you must maintain your 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 financing and your valuation growing. Um, and so right now it is the number one strategy is getting towards that 100 million uh, ounce mark. It's a very important, I mean, when you think about it, it would be the equivalent like a 10 million ounce gold deposit. It's a very important number to be for M&A and other, other, yeah. other reasons, right? Yeah. But obviously, um, 
we are looking at doing a small scale pilot uh, startup for many reasons, right? The, obviously, it's to be able to prove to, it highly de-risks the project yeah. by demonstrating that yeah. it's working and if it can be profitable even at a pilot scale, then ramping it up uh, to a, a larger scale, you already have a permit in place, uh, expanding that permit, uh, proving the metallurgy, proving the mining technique, but the other big one as you were seeing is it uh, creates innovation, capacity building, training, it, it, it demystifies the whole process, makes it touchable for the regional government and the local uh, local community. And then it starts to help building out capacity so that when something becomes larger, they're already, because we're, it's really important for us mm. to maximize the local content that they're involved in a big part of that, not as just the jobs, but it's also the contracting and supplying, and, and that takes a little bit of a capacity building. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to be honest, we probably, uh, I think Tolima, the government, is is more aggressive than we are. And so we really need to get our uh, get more on top of that and really start moving forward heavily to getting into that permitting process for the pilot. Because I didn't want to start that process until they were on board, right? Because that's the whole point, right? Um, to make it a, more of a collaborative uh, project, but I think they're they're highly uh, aligned to the to the concept, and it's something we're going to put a, a whole lot more focus on in 2025 and get get it fast tracked. Okay, so I don't want to put a, a date or, or a time on it exactly, but what, when you say get it fast tracked, what best case scenario? What what are you thinking? I would like to, and in a normal timeline for a permit in, in Colombia would be two years, and obviously I didn't want to wait two years. That's the reason of making it a collaborative process and something yeah. can be done together to get it a little bit more attention. So I'm hoping that we will get something in place by the end of the year. That wow. is the goal. Okay, all right, amazing. Um, what, what, what have we got left? Have we got any drilling left to come out from the 2024 campaign? The drill rig's still running right now. What's the fo is the focus now on existing target? Are you still testing some of the greenfield stuff? What, what, what's going on with the drill bit? Yeah, we're still going to be testing. We're still doing more work at Mangos. We eventually want to get to free us. We have some logistical hurdles because there's new water lines and other things to be put into place. Yep. Um, and, and we will still be doing a little bit of discovery style testing of targets to continue to build that inventory. But yes, a lot of it will be just looking at filling out, getting the spacing, executing on resources. But, you know, we've had a very healthy news flow since about August of last year, and yeah. I expect that to continue. We like keeping the news, we like keeping it open, what we're doing, the regional work, the, the, the what's happening at the end of the drill bit. We got the two drills turning, we're doing 24,000 meters of drilling. Um, um, uh, this year, which is even more than we did last year, I think we ended up between 14 and 15,000 at the at the end of the year uh, cutoff, so 24,000 this year. Um, so I just expect to continuously so, and we'll also be able to, as we go closer to the end of the year, be able to provide more guidance and and certainty in where we're going to be with our resource estimate. Yeah, so big year to get really by early 2026 to get that resource number as up as possible, really. That's the idea. We want yeah. it out as soon as possible in 2026 with the drilling to be completed in 2025. Good, all right, well look, as you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep following the story. Uh, so yeah, no, good luck Ian, and uh, thanks for coming back on. Thank you, Ayling. I look forward to continuing to say what we said and what we delivered on, right? So it's, that's the, nice, the other nice part about where we're at. We, this is what we said we were gonna do. We delivered on it in 2024, and we'll continue to be able to execute in 2025. No, I agree. I think especially with all, with the resource delineation these these veins are so content the, the continuity of these veins is just incredible and it's yeah. I, I i've got no doubts we're going to see some pretty nice results coming up so no ian appreciate it thank you very much for having me cheers